On behalf of the Great Basin College Theater Program, we wish you the best of the holiday season. As a gift to you this festive time of year, we are happy to present our audio play production of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. This performance features the voices of Laura C. DeBaca, Nick C. DeBaca, Ethan Hockley, Sharon Owen, and Sarah Walls, with Scott Glennon as Ebenezer Scrooge. The production was produced and directed by John Patrick Rice. Technical direction, sound design, and special effects by Don Bartlett. A special thank you to our media partner, Elko Broadcasting Company. Now, please enjoy Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. We're going to tell you a story. It's a ghost story. The best one I know. It may frighten you. It may delight you. But once you've heard it, keep it with you, like a candle for the dark. To begin with, Marley was dead. A dead is a doornail. You have to know that before anything else. Else there's no ghost and no story. Mind you, I don't know what there is that's so particularly dead about a doornail. I mean, it seems to me there are lots of other things just as dead. Mud puddles or driftwood, old fish bones, or very small rocks. I come to think of it, I'm not sure what a doornail is. <coughs> anyway, Marley was dead. His partner, not quite dead, was Ebenezer Scrooge. Ah, uh, humbug. A greedy, grasping, money-grubbing man. Humbug, 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 humbug. Ah, uh, humbug. And no one came to see him. Ah. Uh. Who would want to? No blizzard that blew was more bitter than Scrooge. Hum. When it was cold, he was colder. Ah, uh, humbug. We are what we are, but once upon a time, of all good days, on Christmas Eve, the world gave Ebenezer Scrooge a second chance. He was in his counting house, counting. Ten thousand twenty, I'm richer than you. Ten thousand twenty-one, richer than you. Ten thousand twenty-two. Merry Christmas, Uncle! Ah, humbug! Christmas a humbug? I'm sure you don't mean that. I'm sure I do. What good is it? People spending money they don't have, getting things they don't deserve, giving away things they'd rather keep. Uncle! Out! Upon Merry Christmas! Every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled in his own pudding. What a strange thing to say. But Uncle Scrooge... I say it's a humbug. Keep Christmas your own way. Let me keep it in mine. But you don't keep it. Let me leave it alone, then. Good afternoon. Uncle Ebenezer, I'm here to invite you to join us tomorrow night for Christmas dinner. Please say you'll come. I won't. Good afternoon. But no one wants to be alone at Christmas. Please, Uncle. My wife and I... Oh, your wife and you. You weren't poor enough. You had to go get married. I fell in love. Weren't you ever in love? I was not. Good afternoon. Well, if you change your mind... Good afternoon. Merry Christmas, Uncle. Good afternoon. And a Happy New Year. Good afternoon. Have we the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley has been dead these seven years. Oh, I'm sorry. Not as sorry as he is. What is it you want? Mr. Scrooge, we're raising some money for the poor and the homeless to buy them some food and give them a place to sleep. What may we put you down for? Nothing. You wish to be anonymous? I wish to be left alone. That is what I wish, since you ask. But, Mr. Scrooge, without food and shelter, many will die. Then let them die. It will decrease the surplus population. Good afternoon. Mr. Scrooge! Good afternoon! He keeps saying good afternoon, but I don't think he means it. You watch it, Cratchit! Unless you want to lose your job. Well? Merry Christmas, Mr. Cratchit. Thank you. Uh, Merry, uh, good goodbye. Humbug. When it came time to close up shop, Scrooge called to his clerk, Bob Cratchit. Cratchit! Sir? 
Time to close up. Oh, uh, y y yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Cratchit. Sir? I suppose you'll want the whole day off tomorrow? If it's quite convenient, sir? It's not convenient, and it's not fair. There's nothing convenient about it. You expect me to pay you a day's wage for nothing? It's only once a year, Mr. Scrooge. A poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. Just see that you're here even earlier the next morning. Ye yes, sir. Merry, uh, good after. Thank you, sir. Scrooge hobbled home. It was the coldest, crispest Christmas ever's eve. The fog crept in through every keyhole. The wind was a dog, a cold one, biting bones. As he reached his house, where he lived all alone, Scrooge glanced at the knocker on the door. He'd seen it a thousand times before, but now it looked like the face of Jacob Marley. <sighs> Pooh, pooh. Humbug. It's a humbug, I don't believe it. He went to his room and took his cough medicine. Then he put on his nightcap and sat by the fire to eat his gruel. Humbug. No such thing as ghosts. What's gruel? Gray, runny stuff. Oh. And then... Then Scrooge heard a sound. Like something dragging chains coming up the stairs. It's a humbug still. I don't believe it. And it came up the stairs. And it came to the door. And it walked right through. Scrooge. Take a folly. I don't believe it. You're dead. I'm imagining you. My stomach's upset, that's all. You are an undigested bit of beef, or a crumb of bad cheese, or a portion of an underdone potato. That is what you are. An old potato. Oh! Oh, I take it back, I take it back. You're not an old potato. Now do you believe in me? I, I do. But why are you here? What do you want with me? What is that chain you wear? I must walk the earth, witnessing the unhappiness of those I could have helped but did not. I wear the chain I forged in life. You'll wear one too, Scrooge. Yours was as heavy as this seven years ago. But you were always a good man of business. Mankind should have been my business. I am here to warn you that you still have one chance to escape my fate. You will be haunted by three spirits. I think I'd rather not. The first will appear when the clock strikes one. Now couldn't I take them all at once and get it over with? The second at two, the third at three. Remember what I've said, Scrooge. You will not see me again. Remember me. Jacob, wait! I have some questions. The ghost was gone. Jacob! Molly! Uh, humbug! Do you know what a humbug is? I don't. It's a thing you don't believe. I don't believe it. It is a humbug! So Scrooge blew out his candle and went to bed. Hello. Hello. Who are you? I'm the little boy. The little boy? The little boy reading the story. What story? A Christmas carol. Oh, I see. Well, why are you reading it under there? I was waiting for the ghost to go away. There are still three more ghosts. Ooh. Oh, no, wait a minute. Come here. Uh, come here. Uh, they're not all scary. They're not? Well, not too scary. Why don't you stay and help us tell the story? You could decide things. I could. I'll show you. When Scrooge awoke... The clock was striking one, and something grabbed his bed curtains and pulled them open. It was the most beautiful ghost he'd ever seen. 
You don't look like a ghost. Thank you. It's an excellent ghost. You can start now. Thank you. Are you the spirit I was told to expect? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? I beg your pardon. No, your past. Come with me. But where are we going? To visit your childhood. What are we doing? We're flying. Oh, why? I remember this place. Do you? Of course. I was a little boy here. And there was a, a thing right over there and a big tree here. And uh, something happened to me right here. And this was my school. The children have gone home for the holidays. But the school is not empty. There is one little boy left behind. It was me. Why didn't you go home? My father never sent for me. It was too expensive. What is that on your cheek? Uh, <clears throat> nothing. Let's look at another Christmas. Why, it's Fezziwig alive again. I used to work for him. I was his apprentice. Who is it? Fezziwig. Oh, I thought you said he had a fuzzy pig. Fezziwig! Hey, Fezziwig, it is me! He can't hear you. These are shadows of things that were. Ebenezer! Sir? Who's that? That's you, as a young man. Doesn't look anything like me. Ebenezer Scrooge! What do you mean by letting me keep you working so late? It's Christmas Eve, lad. Yes, sir. Well, don't let it happen again. Go and fetch Mrs. Fezziwig. Yes, sir. And a bottle of sherry. And a bottle of port. What do you remember about him? Music and, and dancing. And Dick Wilkins. And, uh, whoever else works here. Corkscrews and thread the needle. And some pretty girls. And cold roast and mince pies and Christmas puddings. <laughs> he never did anyone wrong. And when he danced, his legs positively winked. To your absolute health, Mr. Fezziwig, and to yours, Mr. Fezziwig. The man was an endless smile. You mean he wasted his money on parties? It wasn't about the money, don't you understand? He made us happy. He could make us happy or sad, and he chose to make us happy. It was a pleasure to work for him. Like working for you? Uh, Mrs. Fezziwig. You're looking lovely as always. Who's the girl? Her name was Belle. Isabel. She is pretty. I know. I was in love with her. She had the face of an angel. Why didn't you marry her? I don't know. You don't know? I don't remember. Then let's look and see. 10,020, I'm richer than you. 10,021, richer than you. Ebenezer. Belle, I didn't hear you. I've come to say goodbye. What? I'm leaving. What? what? What do you mean? You've fallen in love with someone else. That's ridiculous. We used to share our lives with each other. Now the only thing you think about is making money. What's wrong with making money? Nothing if you use it well. But your money uses you, Ebenezer. It's as if you have something to prove by making more money than anyone. You've forgotten the things that really matter. One by one, you've left behind all the people in your life. I haven't asked you to leave. Not in so many words. But when we met, we were poor. It didn't matter then. It made us rich in other things. Now I only keep you from what you really love. So I release you. This might hurt for a while, but it will pass. Goodbye, Ebenezer. Yours is the hard part, really. I hope you will be happy with the life you have chosen. Wait! Don't just sit there. Do something. Say something. Don't let her go. Don't let her go. Spirit, take me home. It hurts to remember this. It hurts because you forgot it. I didn't mean to. I did love her. I still do. Uh, Oh. The second when the bell tolls two.
Ebenezer Scrooge. What's that? Who's that? I am the ghost of Christmas present. Get out of bed and know me better, man. Get out of bed, you weird little man. You've never seen the likes of me before. No. Never met any of my brothers? I, I don't think so. How many brothers do you have? What year is it? 1843. Then I have 1842 brothers. One for every Christmas before me. Touch my robe. Where are we going? Out! You've never met Christmas before. Right here, get your toasty, roasty chestnuts. Good King Winslet's lost looked out on the feast of Stephen. Toasty, roasty chestnuts here. Tim, is that you, Tim? Where have you got to? Spanish onions, French plums, Norfolk pippins. Norfolk what? When the snow lays round about and the something even... <laughs> I don't know the words. Is that you, Tim? Uh, where are we? Where are we, lad? Read it to me. They flew through the streets and over the town to the house of Scrooge's clerk, Mr. Bob Cratchit. Mrs. Cratchit was cooking a goose. The goose is cooked! Where's Martha? And Bob? And where is Tiny Tim? Good King Tiny Tim looked out on the feast of Stephen. Bob Cratchit and Tiny Tim were just coming home with some last-minute things for Christmas dinner. When the snow lay round about and the even. There's Father. Hello, my love. Hello, Mum. I'm the King. And how did little Tim behave? Only as good as gold. You know, he gets ever so thoughtful sometimes, and he thinks some of the strangest things you've ever heard. Today... He asked me if people can be crippled on the inside as well as out. I suppose it comes from sitting alone so much. Well, no one is sitting alone tonight, Your Majesty. Smell that goose. Mmm, my favorite. And Christmas pudding after. Oh, my favorite. The truth is, it wasn't much of a supper. The goose was very small. But they stuffed it with stuffing and they mashed potatoes and they sweetened the sauce. And they ate every bit and loved every bite. Then for dessert, there was a Christmas pudding, a cannonball aflame. Boom! After they ate, they sat around the fire, where the chestnuts roasted and toasted. A toast to many happy Christmases to come. Hear, hear. They were not a handsome family. That is to say, they were not well-dressed and their shoes were hardly new ones. But they were happy. And the more Scrooge watched... The more he wondered. God bless us. God bless us. God bless us, everyone. Spirit, tell me, what will happen to Tiny Tim? The boy is very sick. But he'll get better. He will get better, won't he? If there were a cure, Bob Cratchit couldn't afford it. Not with the price of medicine. Not on the salary you pay him. Never knew his son was sick. You never cared, Scrooge. Let him die. It'll decrease the surplus population. Come on. We have another house to visit. Where are we going? Your nephew's house. I've never been. I know. <laughs> Honestly, he called it a humbug. Bah, humbug, he said. Sounds like he's talking about you. Uh, I don't think it's funny. Neither do I. My dears, I have to laugh about my Uncle Scrooge. In fact, I'd like to propose a toast. You're not serious. To my dear Uncle Scrooge. I think he likes me. Hmm. To my Uncle Scrooge, the craftiest, stingiest, most hard-hearted, tight-fisted, Penny pinching skin for I know. Someday, I suspect his name will mean exactly that. To Uncle Scrooge. He's out of my will. You never put him in. Well, I won't. Why do you still invite him every Christmas? You know he won't come. And I don't like the way he treats you. But it does my heart good to invite him. Besides, you never know. There could be another man inside of him just 
waiting to come out? I only hope he isn't worse than this one. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of Uncle Scrooge. Let's play a game. Charades. You first. I don't see why I had to come here just to be insulted. That's true. You could be insulted almost anywhere. One word. Thoughtful. A man. Think. Curious. A think. Thinking. No, uh, a man stroking his chin. A man stroking your chin. You're curious. You have a dimple. Your chin. Chinny chin chin. The three little pigs. Not by the hair. Not by the chin. It's a goatee, you idiot. Little beard. A beard on your chin. <gasps> Wait, wait. Oh, oh, a goatee. I can't believe they couldn't guess that. It, it's your turn, dear. Huh. Two words. Old man. Old woman? Old goat. Old maid. Grumpy. Old grumpy. Oh, uh, a witch, a witch. A duck. Old grumpy goat. Old, old stinker. Oh, my. I know what it is. It's your Uncle Scrooge. <laughs> Very funny. If nothing else, he's given us an evening's entertainment. <laughs> he certainly has. He's certainly given us nothing else. <laughs> you see, I love my Uncle Scrooge. Perhaps he doesn't deserve it, but I love him anyway. And so, as long as there is Christmas in my heart, I'll drink to his health. A Merry Christmas to him. A Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. He could have afforded a better house if he hadn't gotten married. Scrooge. You're an idiot. I'm sorry, but it's true, and someone has to say it. Your nephew still loves you. God only knows why. And he's the only family you have left. Yet you go out of your way every year to insult him. Unless you change, you're going to wind up all alone. And when you die, I doubt anyone will miss you. I wouldn't be you for anything in the world. I wouldn't wish you on anyone. Now I've gone and lost my temper, and it's time for me to go. Wait, couldn't we go somewhere else? Just one more house. It has been so long since I was out. My life only lasts a day. My time is short. So is yours, Scrooge. So is every man's. Remember that. Goodbye, Scrooge. Wait, spirit! Where am I? How do I get home from here? The third when the bell tolls three. Three. This is the third ghost. That's right. As the bell tolled three, Scrooge found himself in a graveyard. And the third spirit came towards him like mist across the ground. Are you the spirit of Christmas yet to come? And you have come to show me things that have not happened but will happen. Spirit of the future, I am more afraid of you than anything else I have seen. Won't you say something? A grave. Spirit, this is a fearful plague. Why have you brought me here? Dear little Tim, it's been so long since we talked. I always liked hearing all the things you thought about. It's Christmas Eve, Tim. Everyone is being very brave. Your mom has made a lovely pudding, and it's snowing again just like the way you like, the way it did last Christmas. You're a good boy, Tim. I'll come see you again. Tomorrow. Spirit, why show me this if there's nothing I can do? Is there a way to save the boy? Tell me I'll do it. Before I look at this stone you point to, are these shadows of things that will happen, or only shadows of things that might happen? Spirit, this stone is neglected. Does no one come to visit here? Why do you want me to read it? Whose name is written here? Please, spirit, please. 
I am not the man I was. I am not the man I was. Give me another chance. Let me live. Let me live. Where am I? On the floor. With all these sheets. I'm not dead. I'm alive. I'm not dead. I'm alive. I'm alive. <gasps> I'm still pretty old, but I am alive. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm here in my room. <laughs> I don't know what day it is. I don't know anything. I'm as silly as a baby. <laughs> Never mind. I'd rather be a baby. Hello. Ooh, ooh. Hello there. He shouted to a boy in the street. You there. What's today? Today? Why, Christmas Day. Christmas Day. They brought me back in time for Christmas. Well, they can do anything they want to. Of course they can. Do you know the poultry shop in the next street but one? I should hope so. What an intelligent boy. Have they sold the big prize turkey? The one as big as me? Yes. Delightful boy. I really like this boy. It's there now. Well, go and buy it. And take it to Bob Cratchit's house, and I'll give you half a crown. Yes, sir. Oh, wait. Here's more money. Go and buy a turkey for yourself, too. And for your mother. And buy yourself a present. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Sir? Well, buy some. <laughs> and buy them something, too. Whatever they like. Jake Marley, you excellent ghost. <laughs> You're a better ghost than you ever were a man. And I will remember, Jacob. And keep Christmas in my heart. Thank you for giving me the chance to become a better man. I'm going to see my nephew. Uncle? If you'll forgive an old fool, I'd like to come and have dinner with your family. What's the matter? Don't you recognize me? I, of course. Are you all right? No. <laughs> I've gone completely insane. Thank God. This must be your wife. Uncle Ebenezer. Oh, you are lovely. The face of an angel. You remind me of someone, but I was foolish and I let her slip away. Don't let her slip away. I, I won't. Now then, where's Bob Cratchit? Uh, here, sir. Funny. You look just like my nephew. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to be nice to everyone. Bob, I'm giving you a raise. S sir? Oh, all right, then. I'm making you my partner. This must be your wife. Mr. Scrooge? A pleasure to meet you, my dear. It was a goatee. It's... What? God bless you both. And Bob? Y yes, sir? We'll find the best doctors in England for little Timmy. Don't you worry, Bob. We'll do everything that can be done. Yes, sir. I'm grinning like an idiot. Well, I can't help it. I thought there was something more important than all of this. But I was wrong. Can you forgive me? Can you ever forgive me? God bless you, Mr. Scrooge. Merry Christmas. Some people laughed at the change in Scrooge, but he didn't mind, because he knew there is nothing so good that some people won't misunderstand it. Scrooge learned to keep Christmas in his heart, and in the years that followed, the two cripples healed. Tim's crippled body and Scrooge's crippled soul. That's our story. The best ghost story I know. Keep it with you, like a candle in your heart. And God bless you, every one. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ.
Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. 